हेलो एवरी वन आई एम साइली बेल्ले माई टूडेज टॉपिक इज डेटा मॉडलिंग फॉर डेटा बेस्ड डिजाइन सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी शूड नो वॉट इज डेटा मॉडल सो डेटा मॉडल डिफाइन हाउ द लॉजिकल स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द डेटा बेस इज मॉडल डेटा मॉडल्स आर फंडामेंटल एंटिटीज टू इंट्रोड्यूस एब्सट्रैक्शन इन अ डी बी एम एस डेटा मॉडल्स डिफाइन हाउ डेटा इज कनेक्टेड टू इच अदर एंड हाउ दे आर प्रोसेस्ड एंड स्टोर इन साइड द सिस्टम The very first data model could be flat data models where all the data used are to be kept in a same plane. Data model is a diagram that displays a set of tables and a relationship between them. So here I have taken one example that suppose I have to build one database and there are some of the tables which I am going to consider like billing address, customer, order, order detail and the product. So in this way I can show the relationship between those tables. So this is the example a data model example by using the ER diagram. So, what is the importance of the data model? We need to know that first. So, importance of the data model is that this is nothing but from we can call it as a blueprint. That is the official documentation. Like architect uh, shows you the blueprint of it, like how your building will look like. So, in this way, by looking to the data model, you will understand what is the relationship between the tables, what is the relationship between the objects. then employees uh, without database knowledge can understand like what will be the structure what is the structure of the database exactly a data model diagram versus a list of the tables he can understand then he can use it as a effective communication tool or he can improve interaction among the managers the designers and the end users obviously so it is very independent from the particular dbms like if you are using any type of database management system whether it is a oracle database management system mysql or you can see can using ibm db2 so it will work same for each and every database management system so it may be network database it may be object oriented database etc the data modeling revolves around the discovering and analyzing organizational and users data requirements requirements based on policies Uh, it may be meetings it may be procedures system specifications so first of all identify what data is important and identify what data should be maintained so in this way we can focus on these two questions and we can build the data model we can go for the data modeling so here uh, we can have the data models which are widely used the first one is a relational data model this type of model designs the data in the form of rows and columns within a table this means this is in a tabular format thus a relational model uses tables for representing data and in between relationships tables are also called as relations if you are, you are saying relational database model so that means relations are nothing but the tables then the second is entity relationship data model an er model is a logical representation of the data as objects and relationships among them these objects are known as entities and relationship is an association among these entities this particular model was designed by peter chain and it was published in 1976 so this is very popular one entity relationship data model then the third is object based data model this is the extension you can say extension of a er model with notions of functions encapsulation and object entity this model supports a rich system and that includes structured and collection types then the fourth one is a semi structured data model this type of data model is different from other three data models which we have uh, learned till now we have seen the semi structured data model allows the data specification at places where the individual data items of the same type may have different attribute sets the extensible markup language also known as xml is widely used for representing this particular semi structured data model although xml was initially designed for including the markup information to the next document it gains importance because of this application in the exchange of data so why uh, entity relationship diagram is erd is important why we are using that erd is a data modeling technique used in software engineering to produce a conceptual data model of an information system uh, then you can so erd is a illustrate the logical structure of the database Uh, we have we are going to use a case tool for this uh, development of erd uh, then for design by sap there are some of the modelers which are proposed by the oracle or the sap also you can use any of this then er model stands for entity relationship model it is a very high uh, level data model and uh, this model is used to define the data elements and relationship for a specified 
system it develops a conceptual design uh, for the data elements uh, for the database it develops a very simple and easy to design view of the data suppose if you want to design the school database in this case uh, the student will be an entity with the attributes like address name id age roll number uh, division and the address can be another entity with attributes like ct street name pin code etc phone number uh, there will be a relationship between them so in this way you can consider any of the example and you can draw the er diagram for the same here are uh, the components of the er diagram er diagram is uh, divided into three parts that is entity entity um, can be your person place object event and the concept um, then example of the entities can be suppose uh, a university may have some departments all these departments employ various lectures and offer several programs so some courses make up each program students register a particular program and enroll various courses a lecturer from the specific department takes each course and each lecturer takes teaches a various group of students so yeah in this particular area uh, we can have the entities like a student then attribute uh, is the next component of the er diagram so here attribute it has key attribute composite attribute multiple attribute and the derived attribute then we can map the relation by using one to one relationship one to many many to one and many to many so in the next part i'm going to explain all those things thank you